誰か失礼いたします昼食をお持ちいたしました入れ失礼いたしますカノンはカノンを呼んで、カノンを呼んで、カノンを呼んで、カノンを呼んで、カノンを呼んで、カノンを呼んで、カノンを呼んで、カノンを呼んで、カノンを呼んで、カノンを呼んで、カノンを呼んで、カノンを呼んで、カノンを呼んで、カノンを呼んで、カノンを呼んで、カノンを呼んで、カノンを呼んで、カノンを呼んで、カノンを呼んで、カノンを呼んで、カノンを呼んで、カノンを呼んで、カノうん、良い匂いだなどうやらクラウスは良い料理人を入れたと見えるはい近年入ったゴーダという料理人です料理の腕が良きことは何にも勝るものよ美食は人の世で生きる快楽の山中をなす千年を飽きぬにはこれを欠かさぬが秘訣よ<笑>カノンはウィッチの愛を見つけた。そこに彼は言うと、それは彼は彼は彼は彼は彼は彼は彼は彼は彼は彼は彼は彼は彼は彼は彼は彼は彼は彼は彼は彼は彼は彼は彼は彼は彼は彼は彼は彼は彼は彼は彼は彼は彼は彼は彼は彼は彼は彼は彼は彼は彼は彼は彼は彼は彼は Canon tried to remember to be polite to this guest for a time being. But the visit of this suspicious witch made dark clouds start to enshroud his heart, especially considering that today was the family conference. <laughs> Canon didn't force an answer. This witch probably reads minds, so it's pointless to go to the trouble of saying it out loud. Of course, she could read even his inner resistance. Though it giggled at Canon's childish defiance. Kinzo to no saigo no yaksuku o hatashi ni kita. O yakata sama to no saigo no yaksuku. Warawa wa Kinzo ni yama o nasu ogon o kashitsuketa. Sore o Kinzo ga hoki suru toki. わらわは利子をつけて返却を受けることになっておる。今宵、それをもらい受けに来た。僕には、何の話かわかりません。However, uncertainty began to gather in his heart. Whatever the witch had to say, it couldn't be anything good. <笑>違いない。魔女の話にろくなものはないぞそなたは正しいされど魔女とハサミは使いようだ
ソロモン王のように偉業を成し遂げる者も時にはおるもっとも多くの場合は童話が語るようにろくな目に遭わんがな<笑>しかし金蔵も食えぬわらわの利子の取り立てすらも自らの儀式に取り込みおったわらわをも超えるとてつもない大魔術師かさもなければ狂気に取りつかれたただの知れ者か面白い実に面白い Kalon couldn't guess what the witch was muttering and laughing about. All he knew was that anything that made this witch laugh must be, have the exact opposite meaning to it for everyone else. And in the back of his mind, the horrifying words the witch had spat out at him in the past began to resurface. What did you think I'd lend you my power and ask for nothing in exchange? I'll gladly assist a pair in love, and in exchange I'll enjoy watching the cruel fate they'll eventually meet. I've never came across a better show, not over the course of a thousand years. Masaka, you are. The witch suddenly began to recite a bizarre poem. It was something he remembered hearing. So, it was a magic of the heaven. There was no mistake. It was the epitaph that accompanied the portrait of the which Kinzo had put on display. The relatives had guessed that it referred to the location of hidden gold, but no one knew what it meant for sure. The witch suddenly began to recite that epitaph. Kano, Kagu de Aru Kisama Nara, Kinzo Kara Kite Yo, Subete Yo. 黄金鏡へ返す日がやってきたのだ喜ぶがいいお前の地獄にまみれた家具の日々がようやく終わる時がやってきたのだ<笑>お前はそれをずっと望んできたはず自らに存在価値を持たぬ家具にとってただ存在するだけの日々は苦痛に他ならない魂ある者にとって写しおは固執すべきものだが亡き者にとって写しおは苦害でしかないからの<笑>ウツシオに何かの未練があるというのか家具の分際で未練などない僕は家具だから<笑>貴様は実に模範的な家具だな<笑>よいよいしかし何の未練もないとはつくづく面白みのない未練こそがお前の快楽だというのかその通り千年も生きると大抵の魔女は生き飽きる
わらわは退屈から逃れるために人間たちの運命にブランデーや果実を練り込みケーキのように焼き上げるのだオーブンの中で苛烈な運命に踊る人間たちのなんと面白きこと<笑>わらわはこの方面にかけては地と知られていてなわらわの料理の腕を見に時には遠方から珍客が見物に来ることすらあるくらいよ<笑>言っても家具ごときには理解できぬかカラン・クンドンドスタンドウォッチウォッサイング。ハワバー・ヒフ・フォリー・ヴィアライズ・ベティ・ウォッサイング・ビング・ヒュー・ト・ヒュー・トゥ・フェイト・フィュー・マン・ザ・ザ・シャー・エンジョイング・イッツ・ウェネヴァー・サム・ハーム・ウォッサイング・ウェネヴァー・サム・ハーム・ウォッサイング・ウェネヴァー・サム・ハーム・ウォッサイング・ウェネヴァー・サム・ハーム・ウォッサイング・ウェネヴァー・サム・Was a being to be received with overflowing affection. Even though the day Canon should have been waiting impatiently for her to come, he was confused by his own inability to accept it easily. Why was that? The face of Shannon, the person he loved as a sister, rose to his mind. And for some reason, Jessica's face did too. <coughs> Canon bit his lower lip hard enough that it hurt. Thinking about Jessica like that was something furniture mo- must never do. Even though he'd known that, even though he'd complained about Shannon's relationship, why was it that Jessica rose to his mind at a time like this? He felt a little shameful of his own naivety. And to forget about Jessica, he turned his thoughts to Shannon. Shannon was also furniture. She had no reason to jo- rejoice at the coming of a day when all would return to nothingness. But Shannon, Through her relationship with George, has experienced emotion forbidden to furniture. Even though she isn't qualified to be bonded with him, she's trapped in a dream that she isn't allowed to have. Will Shannon be able to joyfully accept this development? No, she won't. Shannon is still lingering regrets. Those will probably become the great source of pain and torture for her. Those lingering regrets. Uh, were planted by none other than this witch. Why? Because that would make it be more interesting, nothing more. Shannon was. Machi wa bite ita hazu no hi ni. Shitte wa nara nai kanjo wo mochi. Totemo tsurai omoi wo shirare ru daro. Boku wa. Boku tachi kagu wo kaihou suru hi wo temiyage ni. Otozure te kureta anata ni kansha suru. そしてシャノンにその日を受け入れがたくしたお前を憎むお前もシャノン同様に未練に苦しませてやりたかったぞしかしお前は愚直に家具であり続けわらわに籠絡されることもなかったしかしシャノンを慕いすぎたようだな<笑>シャノンの未練がそなたの未練となるそれはわらわへの憎悪へと変わるのか<笑>わらわを殺したくば殺してみるがよい<笑>金蔵の家具ならばその程度の力は持っていようしかしわらわを殺せば家具どもに安息の日は永遠に訪れぬぞそなたにそれが耐えられるのかわらわによる解放を本当に拒むことができるのか<笑>ひざまずけな何をひざまずきわらわの靴に口づけをするがよいさもなくばわらわはこの場を立ち去ろうぞ帰りて永遠に姿を現わさぬのうカノンそなたはそれに耐えられるのか
黄金鏡の扉が開かれればそなたの苦難に満ちた家具の生は終わろう望むならば人間としての生を与えてもよいさすればもはやジェシカとは対等貴様も知りたいはずだ恋の味が隠そうとも知っておるぞ甘き恋の沼にて溺れるシャノンを見てそなたは羨ましがっている恋の味を知りたくてうずうずしておるのよ<笑>やめろやめろ僕を再び狼落するつもりか僕はお前を楽しませるためのおもちゃになり果てたりしないほうならばシャノンで満足するとしようまいた種はそなただけではないのでな時には実を結ばぬ果実もある鍵を手にせし者はいかに従えて黄金鏡へ旅立つべし第一の番に鍵の選びし6人を生贄に捧げよ第二の番に残されし者は寄り添う二人を引き裂け。A witch recited the epitaph again. It was so, so sudden and diverged so strongly from the current topic. However, that challenging smile made it seem almost as though she was using the epitaph as a strain, as a threat against Canon. この碑文の儀式を成し遂げるには第二の番に寄り添う二人を生贄にえに捧げねばならぬ寄り添う二人は誰でもよい夫婦でもよいし恋人同士でもよい誰を選ぶかは儀式のルールにのっとりわらわが気まぐれに決めてよいことになっている今のシャノンなら。これほどふさわしい第二の番の生贄にえもないとは思わぬか<笑>ひ卑劣な。カノン realized something. Until today he'd thought he'd given up on everything else he lived as furniture, acting like furniture. But in reality, that wasn't true. He loved Shannon too dearly. Therefore, when Shannon was in pain, Canon shared that. If only Shannon had continued to live as furniture, indifferently like Canon, without any regrets of this world, he wouldn't have to be in so much pain. The witch planned to toy with Shannon, who had known the taste of love. No, whom she had taught the taste of love as she killed her. She wouldn't be welcomed into the Golden Land and granted a compassionate release. Instead, if a witch had her way, she'd be used for sacrifice, sub subjected to the utmost of torture and pain, and forcibly turned into a human foundation for this evil ceremony. And this witch would probably make Shannon meet this horrible fate for no reason other than it was amusing to her. Furthermore, she was threatening to do this so that she could, she could make Canon, who would never submit to the witch, finally give in. It was simple. In the end, though he had tried to resist the witch and avoid pleasing her, he had only made things more amusing for her. After all, he was furniture. No, a toy. They were nothing but toys meant to distract her from her boredom. No, Sir Canon! Kizama Zukeba! Shano mo ikinye ni erabu koto shikain koto mo naizu! お前のようなガングを一度屈服させてみたかった<笑> Without a fragment of elegance, the witch sneered at Canon and laughed indecently. That's right, she'd predicted Canon's submission even before he'd made the decision himself. Canon. Chose to get down on both knees in front of a witch. It didn't matter what happened to himself. 
However, the one thing he couldn't bear to see was Shannon, who had given him his only reason to live during his days of furniture being toyed with like this. That's why kissing the shoes of a witch as was an easy oath for Canon to make. When his quivering lips actually touched a witch's shoe, Beatrice let out her an ecstatic cry, let a look of ecstasy realized to her face, and then laughed with a voice filled to bursting. At that moment, the witch who had grown bored of life after a thousand years was completely filled with the evil emotion that she lived for. When lunch ended, relatives moved to a parlour. I'm sorry about not making much commentary or anything during this bit, but there's just not really much for me to talk about so far. Uh, but I was thinking about the epitaph of it, so I'll go over that a bit. Oh, uh, where is it? Uh, blah, 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 it's not important. It's this bit. Uh, on the first twilight of the six chosen by the key of sacrifices. Now... I don't think, for some reason I'm thinking that the six chosen are not random by this point. Uh, I don't remember exactly what happened during the first round through, but maybe the pe six who died were people who like were against, no, you know, Kiri wasn't against, what's her name, Maria went at the table, but Kiri died. Uh, the next one, those who remain shall tear apart those two who are close. Uh, this one makes me think it doesn't have to be one killer. We can have mul we can have multiple sets of people doing it act and acting it independently. Independently. I don't know how this is going to really help us later, but I want to throw that out there now. Rosa had bought a high-class brand of black tea from a famous store in Ginza. That had been served and the parlour was filled with a pleasant aroma. Since the children were there too, the adults tried to interact like normal relatives on the surface, talking pleasantly about recent events and how their children were growing up. It had started raining, so the children couldn't do anything but sit here like this, watching TV, unable to go outside. Mario was apparently a TV kid. And she kept watching a boring daytime program without getting bored, giggling all by herself. After the first battle joined in, seeming to deepen his relationship with Maria, but he'd gotten up early that morning and was gradually hit with a wave of drowsiness. <sighs> Okay, so I, I want to pay attention in the bit where eventually in the future Rosa reads out the letter. I want to pay about to attention to everyone's reactions to it and then see who dies based on that reaction. I might take notes so if you see me leaning over, that's what I'm doing. あんだけ態度でかそうにしてて緊張なんてしてたのかよ。以上、俺なりにはな。あ、あ、うん。あ、あ、あ。あ、あ、あ。あ、あ、あ。あ、あ、あ。あ、あ、あ。あ、あ、
こいつ本当に眠いらしい毛布を持ってきてあげてくれないかな<笑>さあどうぞ Yomitawa brought her blanket over from the shelf. The large parlour wasn't cold, but the air had gotten a bit chilly. So when Bachelor took the blanket, he immediately wrapped himself up like a turtle. Honto ni nemukatan da ne. Nanji ka ni okiru? Okoshite ageru yo. Aya, toku ni kibou wa. Nanka yoo ga atta na okoshite kure lea ii ishi. Nan ni mo nen nara. Tell me, Murasu, to create a heat. Ah, oh, yes, me. Oh, Batoran, ne chano? Oh, here, ne? Oh, here, ne? Oh, Maria, masure. Ko, Kora, Maria. Batoran, wa nemu in da kara hotte oite agena kya. Kumasawa san, mo ichi mai mofu o moraru kana. It was doubtful whether Maria really. Wanted it to take a nap. She probably saw Battler wrapped up in a blanket and wanted to do the same. When she received a blanket from Kumasawa, she joyfully wrapped herself up and and set of camp again in front of the TV. <laughs> Jessica, the irony in that statement is. Kikoete is all. Non biri hirmesok te, shikamo soto wa taifu de ame. Nani mo surukoto ga ne te kota tsmari. Ore no deban jane te koto za. Sore wa do kana. Nani mo okora nai kara. Nani mo shinai. Nante uke mi no shiseja. Jinsei wa taikus da yo. Chigao ze. そういう意味じゃない。うん、なんつうのかな。こういう時、俺はこう思うことにしてる。出番じゃねえんだよ。こいつがお芝居だったならさ、俺の出番だったら、舞台袖でおとなしくしてるに限るってわけさ。自分の人生はいつだって自分が主人公だろ。そんな脇役根性でどうすんだよ。自分から進んで舞台に上がらなきゃ<笑>そういう意味じゃねえ今は俺の出番じゃねえって言いたいのさ<笑>悪いな眠くて思考がめちゃくちゃだ勘弁してくれ<笑><笑>眠くてなんだか尻滅裂なことを言ってるねもうそっとしてあげようよ私は聞き捨てならねえぜ自分の人生はいつだって自分が主人公だよちょっとそのあたり本格的にバトラーと議論したいけどな寝ぼけてるだけだよ深く考えちゃダメさなんかさ自分は主役になれないから舞台に上がりたくないみたいな根性なぜだかすっげえうぜえって思って With distant eyes, Jessica gazed out the window at the grey rose garden obscured by rain When she put her forehead against the glass, the pleasantly cool sensation seemed to chase away memories she was trying to forget まだ君の出番じゃなかったってことなのじゃあいつ君は舞台に上がるんだよ In that case, who the heck is the main character on this stage? Wait, who am I in this? もうやりたい放題じゃねえかよなんだこりゃよめちゃくちゃじゃねえか<笑>そなたがわらわを否定する根拠とする18人だの19人だのという理論が実に滑稽だったのでな差し手を変えてみたまでよ
そなたがわらわを否定する最大の根拠は単にわらわが駒としてゲーム盤に並ばなかったからというだけのことならばこうしてクイーンを先にさせばいいだけの話ではないか初手にてクイーンに道を開けるはチェスの王道ではないか<笑>ふざけやがってこんなの認められるわけねえじゃねえかよ魔女が歩いて玄関からやってきただとふざけるじゃねえ<笑>なんだなんだ前回のゲームではそなたに散々自由に手を進めさせたぞこたびはわらわがそなたの手に合わせて駒を動かしたにすぎん焦点にてもう降参か Well, we're trying to prove it's not magic, so all we've got to do is prove she's not a witch. くそったれふざけるな誰が降参なんかするかってんだ Uh, she could just be some random benefactor who came so new and showed up randomly, like they mentioned in the first、uh, round, but. We could also have a line of logic where she's not actually there, because Battler and、uh, Peace Battler haven't seen her yet, while Player Battler, well, he's player, she, he sees everything. なるほどなまだまだお前の手番は終わってないってわけだ好きに手を進めりゃいい今のうちに十分な人権を築いとく俺が必ずしのぐ必ず詰めるいいわけなんてされたくねえ存分に来やがるってんだ<笑>まだまだこの程度じゃ魔女なんて認められるわけがねえぜそうささっきマリアのお菓子を魔法で直したように見えたが実は同じお菓子をもう一つ懐に忍ばせていて芝居がかった方法ですり替えて I, I chose... 魔法で直したみたいに見せただけかもしれない I chose to ignore that because why would we care about that? ああそうそうに決まってるダメだぜ全然ダメだぜどうぞ。あつのレヴィアラスマジックシーユーズトゥペアバッチイズンドイレクトリーレイテッドトゥベケースウェイ。ウェイゴングトゥソーヴインアビットサウアンマスティジャスティングトゥグノーバッカインドスト
Even though it had been so lively in the parlour with so many people gathered there, when all of them scattered at once and were swallowed by the vast mansion, it created an eerie silence with no sound except for the rain. いや。そんな人間には一度も会ったことはないぜ。兄貴は。会ったことなんてないわ。キリエさん、本当なの私もちょっと玄関ホールに出た時に挨拶をしただけです。20歳ちょっとくらいに見えたわ。私は名乗
隠してたわけじゃないんだ実はちょいとしたいいわあなたが私に話す必要がないと判断した話なんだからそれをこの場では追求しないそれよりキュームは黄金の魔女様の狙いを探ることなんでしょうああ俺たちの話を整理した上で敵の撃ってくる手が見えるか Rudolf had a certain measure of trust in Kiri's unique thinking technique chessboard thinking. Can we, can we stop with the chess metaphors, please? Of course, it didn't give him any more peace of mind than fortune telling. But every time Rudolf was polishing up some important strategy, he'd give a great deal of thought to Kiri's advice. For a while, Kiri pressed her finger against her forehead, considering. 今日の今日まで彼女が訪れることが伏せられていた以上彼女は私たちに何らかのサプライズを与える目的があったそれが財産なのか親族としての認知なのかは分かりかねるわでも今日の今日まで訪れることを伏せていたということは事前に知らせることで対応を打たれたくなかったと言えるかもしれないということは彼女の目的は対応を打たれると不利になるものらしいわかるなるほどな例えば親父が以前に書かせた遺言状そのものだとか血縁の認知とそれを証明できるものだとかそれが揺るぎないもので盤石な証拠だと言うならむしろそれは予告するはずだろうよそうねむしろ疑う立場にある私たちに弁護士でも鑑定士でも連れてこさせてグーの音も出ないくらいに事実を突きつけるべきなのよそれができるならねうんつまり奇襲狙いという時点で敵は真正面からの成功法では勝てんちゅうことを意味するわけやなどうりや絶対勝てる切り札は堂々と切るに限るで回りくどい切り方はむしろ切り札を曇らせるもんや結論から言うと皆さんがご就寝の遺産問題に直接もしくは間接的に絡む相当のサプライズが突きつけられると予想されるわねおそらく向こうはそのインパクトだけでこちらを圧倒できるつもりでいるしかしその何かは相当のインパクトを伴いながらも絶対ではないつまりそこがこちらのつけ込む余地というわけねあんたはほんま頭の切れるお人やこれだけでも分かればだいぶ心強いでつまり相手のペースに飲み込まれるなっちゅうことやな結局のところ非常にシンプルな結論よ相手が何を切り出そうとも焦らず冷静に対応する交渉術の処方の処方じゃないこれじゃあ相手の思考を読めたとはとても言えないわいいや相変わらずなかなかのもんだぜこちらに攻める余地があると分かれば余裕も変わってくるってもんだ分からないのは彼女とクラウス兄さんの関係ねクラウス兄さんにとってもサプライズなのかそれとも彼女を呼んだのは他でもないクラウス兄さん自身なのかもし後者だったなら随分と厄介なことになるかもしれないわよそうね謎の女を親族会議の当日にこっそり呼びつけるいやらしいセンスがどことなく兄さんっぽい感じもする兄貴こうしよう女の正体がはっきりと証明できない限り俺らはその女のいかなる身分も認めないそれが最善ね現にキリエさんに対して名乗ってすらいない正体不明の女の発言で私たちのカインがかき回されちゃたまらないわ血縁証明でも示してみせるかもしれんで
お父さんの血が流れてることが例えば母子手帳でも示されたらどうにもならん証明物なんかいくらでも偽装を疑える仮にそれが本物だったとしても当人が本人だと証明するには病院沙汰にしなきゃならん少なくとも今の六軒島でそれを証明することは不可能だその通りねつまりこういうことよ今の六軒島では何が示されても真実だと受け入れることはできない台風が去ってしかるべき場所で証明してみせるまで何も信じられないってことよ<笑>そういうので揚げ足を取りまくるのは姉貴の得意技だな任せるぜバカ言ってんじゃないわよあんたも協力するのよ私たちにはお金がいるそれも急ぎまとまった額が私たちは運命共同体よこんなところでひょっこり現れた謎の女に遺産のあてをぶち壊されてたまるもんですか We'd often either seem always form the United Front as siblings at time like this thickened by the idea that their own inheritance might be snatched away by an outsider Hiri knew how indomitable they looked She shook her head slightly and gave a small sigh she gave out, gazed out the window. Outside it was still raining heavily and everything was grey, having lost all vibrance. The lush garden that the sun had shone on earlier now felt like a lie. For some reason, the words Eva said a second ago kept repeating in Kiri's head. So in other words, it's something like this. No matter what's shown to us on Rock and Shima, it can't be accepted as truth. There was an odd nuance to those words. At that moment, the island was closed off by a typhoon and I isolated. They had access to no public institutions and no hospital. So on this island, no matter what, no, no matter what manner of proof related to the outside world was shown, it would always be possible to call it a lie. It would be impossible to prove that something was the truth. Now that they were isolated from the outside world, all truth through the Truth whose proof lay in the outside world were would be called lies. So does that mean that right now on this rock and Juma no truth exists at all? Does that mean that everything will now on be ruled by lies alone? It almost gives the illusion that we've left the human world of truth and have shut away inside another world born of lies. Kiri remembered that woman's appearance one more time. She remembered both what she looked like and the witch of a portrait. On the island which had been cut off. One moment. Okay, the, the tie is there. Uh, on this island which had been cut off from the world of humans and shut away from the world of non humans, a non human being has come to visit. Kiri couldn't think of that smile that had appeared on that woman's face as anything other than a portent of misfortune. I guess the feeling my chessboard thinking missed is a, a vital premise. One that would be necessary to understand, but misfortune bearing smile. Yes, that smile made me feel as though someone inhuman was mocking me. I based my reasoning on the assumption that our opponent is human like us. However, just as this island is now, she may be a being that isn't human, a, and human values may not matter to her. If that's true, all of our reasoning is useless. For what reason has the witch been invited here today? One thing is certain, now in this instant she's staying somewhere on, in this vast mansion. Maria. 今日のお昼にお外で私たち会ったわよね女の人にあれは誰おお何度も言ってるベアトリーチェマリアは以前にベアトリーチェと会ったことがあるのおお
毎年会ってる毎年この六軒島のお屋敷でおおうーじゃわからないでしょそうなのおうんいつから会ってるの何年前からおおわかんないわからないどうして去年一昨年もっと前からおお。Both of astonished. Only for Ushio and my family mansion existed on this island, so there couldn't be any humans other than their, themselves here. And yet Maria said she'd been meeting with this suspicious woman every year during a family conference. <clears throat> If what Maria said was the truth, then that strange woman called Beatrice had been at a family conference every year. That's insane. Is Mario saying that every woman was at a family conference every year and none of us no ever noticed it? Even though Rosa had just met that woman a couple hours ago in the Rose Garden, she was overcome by a strange emotion that told her not to accept that existence. What in the world did they... did I meet earlier today in the Rose Garden with the ty as the typhoon grew near and the winds roared? <sighs> Maria, you were... 毎年彼女と会ってると言ったわね会って何をしてるのおうお歌を歌ったり魔法を習ったり魔法人の書き方も習うのそそうそれはすごいわねマリアがよく自由帳に落書きじゃない魔法人を書いたりしてるわよねそれも彼女に教えてもらったのはいベアトリーチェにねお手本書いてもらうのほらほら見て見てマリア joyfully fished around in her handbag and then she drew out a single note for graphic and began opening to that page most of the pages were covered in drawings that were literally scribbles some of them were cult like things and while it sounded would might sound rude to Maria who joyfully flung the pages They were all creepy. <laughs> Each of the pages Maria uh, in the group Maria opened to had an eerie magic circle. Furthermore, at a glance, Rosa could see that Maria hadn't drawn them. The strength of the strokes, the thickness of the lines, how clean the shape was, by itself. It wasn't enough to guess the background of a person who had written it, but it was enough to Rosa to be sure that it was someone older than Maria. Rosa had to accept it now. There really was a person on this rock and Jima that she herself hadn't known existed up until now. And this person had come to a family conference every year to play with Maria. Maria, Sono, Majo no Beatrice, Coco ni Sunday. それとも私たちのように島の外に住んでいるのおおベアトリーチェは六軒島の魔女だからこの島に住んでる<笑>じゃあ親族会議のない日にはこの島にいるというのねおおフーじゃわからないでしょどうなのおおうんおおお、oh, what, what in the world? What in the... I can't believe it. I can't believe it. How long has this unknown witch been living on this island? I used to live on this island. I, I, I lived on this island, passing the time in a mansion in the Rose Garden. And even so, I, I never encountered a witch like that. Fight. Mama, Mama, どうしたの？ Mama.
I was probably getting it all mixed up with my memories from when I was a young girl. When I was young, I was terrified of a witch, unlike Maria. So for me, the name Beatrice was a synonym for terror. Surely my fear from those days had been revived by the appearance of a woman going by that name. She can't be a witch. She's obviously a human calling herself Beatrice, right? That's right. That witch entrusted me with an envelope. What in the world could that be? Rosa pulled out that western style envelope out of her pocket. It was one of those envelopes that bore the Ushiomaya family crest, which Kinzo used for his personal letters. And its red sealing wax had been sealed by the head's ring which Kinzo held, which meant this envelope belonged to the Ushiomaya family head. In other words, it was from father. Why was a woman calling herself Beatrice holding it, and why did she give it to me? That's right, I'm sure she said to read with her out at dinner. What in the world could be written inside? A sense of uncertainty gripped Rosa, as if opening this envelope might let loose an incredible misfortune. However, at the same time, little curiosity spouted up too, urging her to find out what was written inside before the other siblings could. Using common sense, one might have guessed that it contained a huge decision somehow related to Kapara's inheritance. Actually, she'd received it from a woman who called herself Beatrice. There was simply had to be a connection. Does this person, does it mean this person wants, not just the four, but a total of five people to be included in the inheritance? I need a large sum of money, money and I can't wait long. I feel such a, like a, such a sinful daughter for discussing father's inheritance while he's still alive. But this is not time to spout off cheap ideals. And I've never colluded with Rudolph and Eve, and I've even concluded with Rudolph and Eva in order to get some money out of Krauss. Coming from that position, I can't help but see the appearance of a witch as a sign of approaching misfortune. What could be written in here? I'm sure it's something frightening. Shall I read it secretly myself first? The witch requested to be read at the dinner table or with everyone gathered. But if that's what she wanted, why couldn't she just read it aloud at dinner herself? Why did she go all the trouble in trusting it to me? Simply put, it is because she doesn't mind if I read it secretly beforehand. It'd be better to secretly read the contents first. I understand that means breaking my promise, but this is no longer some cheap, the time for some cheap ideals. Turning on the contents, I should probably discuss with Eva and Rudolph too. They're always really good thinkers when it comes to this sort of thing. While I gulped, I put my hand up to a red ceiling wax. Something suddenly pulled my sleeve and let out a small, and I let out a small screen. <gasps> Mari's expression was the same important of misfortune she'd felt from that witch, and it set a tingle up her spine. Beatrice was a mother, and she was a mother, and she said to her, she was a mother, she was a mother, she was a ちがうわよ。ちょっと封筒みただけじゃない。約束は守るわよ。ママもいつもマリアに約束は守りなさいって言ってるもんね。ママももちろん約束は守るわよ。うん。ママはいいか。その笑い方可愛くないからやめなさ
Mixed in with Maria's gaze, there was a glint, glint of someone that wasn't her. If Rosa broke the rule and opened the envelope here, Beatrice would definitely learn of it. Because Maria was the witch's disciple. Maria was in contact with the witch. ママ、伝える。ねえ、マリア。ベアトリーチとお話をしたいんだけど。だからマリアが困っていると後でそ、その笑いをやめなさいといつも言ってるでしょ。Rosa <笑> reflexively, reflexively hit Mario on the head. That put a stop to Mario's laughing, but it wasn't able to erase the colour that had risen to those eyes, a colour that seemed to bear a portent of misfortune. Rosa swore. She swore that, at least until they left this island, she wouldn't leave Mario alone. She couldn't allow an unknown being to make direct contact with her daughter any longer. <laughs> 